Hi, I'm Christina Morton, founder of The Organizing Company, and you are at home with an organizer. Today, I'm gonna to show you my master closet, but before I do so, I wanna give you a couple quick reminders. Number one, make sure that you're using a strategic organizing method. You can find ours at theorganizingco.com slash method. Without going through the whole process of organizing and using a specific method, the ideas and tips I give you aren't gonna be as effective. So for the best results, make sure you're going through the whole process. Secondly, unlike this gorgeous kimono, there's no one size fits all for organizing. So make sure that you take the principles I give you and apply them to your situation. Not everything that works for a single woman is gonna work in a little kid's closet or a bachelor's or a closet that two people are sharing. So make sure you focus on the organizing principles and customize them to your situation. Of course, if you need help doing that, you can hire the organizing company to come to your home or to help you virtually to get your closet organized. All right. So let's talk about my closet. The first thing I wanna point out is that I am using curtains instead of doors. I had those sliding doors where you can only see one half of your closet at a time and then you gotta move both doors to see the other half and those things drive me crazy. I'm just renting this place right now so it doesn't really make sense for me to invest in doing something cooler, but if you own your place or if you know you're gonna be in that same rental for a long time, you can do something cuter than these curtains, although these are great and work wonderfully. If you are in that situation, I recommend that you do something like pocket doors or sliding doors or French doors where you can just open them up and you can see both sides of your closet at the same time. That's the goal. There are those accordion doors, which I don't know how you can make those cool, but I'm sure there's a way. And so even if you do accordion doors and they push off to the side push off to each side, that's gonna be so much more functional than those typical sliding doors that overlap each other. So that's number one, make sure that you can see your closet. This is especially true for kiddos. It's such a pain for them to have to move both doors to get to stuff. So when I go into clients' homes, what I see in those situations is the kids focus on one side of the closet and they just kind of cram everything in there, even though it belongs on the other side and it has a home. It's Maybe the doors are too heavy or it's just a pain in the butt and they don't wanna take the time. Figure out something else so that the kids can see their whole closet at the same time. And that's even true for us big kids. Okay, so let's talk about a few things here in my closet. I do this at home and I do this with every single client. I make sure to subcategorize the clothing. What that means is tank tops together, then short sleeve then long sleeve. Then I do cardigans and jackets and things you layer over that have, you know, buttons or a zipper or something in front. Um, I have dresses separate and I even subcategorize those. So sleeveless dresses, short sleeve, long sleeve. I have skirts in their own category. I have pants in their own category, things like that. Now, if you sort them by color, especially if you have a lot of clothes, you can see where you have an abundance. So my favorite example is I had a client who we found had eight black button down shirts and she wasn't a hostess at a restaurant. And so those weren't things that she was wearing a lot. There was no need for her to have eight of the same shirt in her closet, but she didn't realize that she did because it was all mixed in and she had a ton of clothes and couldn't see it. And you know, so getting it all grouped together lets you see like, okay, I've got enough of this. For me, it helps me see, all right, I've got enough chambray. I've got two chambray shirts, a chambray, chambray jacket, a denim jacket, and then kind of a, it's not really chambray, it's not really denim, a denim look blazer. So that to me says, all right, Christina, don't buy any more chambray or denim, or don't buy any more horizontal stripe things. I need to cut myself off and have some tough love, okay? So that's one benefit of having things categorized and color-coded. You can see that abundance. And then that helps you when you're deciding to get rid of things too, to know, all right, I can let go of one of these black sweaters because I have five of them, something like that. It also helps you see where there is a lack in your wardrobe. If you are feeling like, I never have anything to wear and I can't ever find anything to go with this and blah, 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 then, Look at the colors in your closet. Look at the styles in your closet. Or if everything in your closet is a blazer and you have nothing to go under it, that's a problem. So getting things categorized lets you see that a lot more clearly, especially when you have a lot of clothes. But then it also helps you see 
where you can fill in in terms of color. So maybe you have a lot of tank tops that could go under a black blazer, but the tank tops are all black. So then you can see, okay, I need to get a couple staples, a couple tank tops that are different colors that I can layer with that. And then when you're shopping, you can make informed decisions that actually fill out your closet more so than just, ooh, this is fun and I like it and I want it, but you have a dozen of it at home already. So within my jacket section, which is kind of here to here, I use Roy G. Biv and then go light to dark. So what that looks like for me is I do whites and creams, then red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and then I go gray, black, brown. And I usually end with brown because one, it, it just seems to fit better with the neutrals at the end, the grays and the blacks, than if I put it up front with the whites and the creams. Imagine your clothes are on a circular rack like at a department store, and so it starts with the whites and it goes all the way around, gray, black, brown, and then it blends into the creams and the whites. So it's a continuum there. So that's how I do it, but you can do whatever color scheme you want. Just be consistent throughout your whole closet and make it something that's easy for you to remember. So you're not constantly putting things in the wrong place or not finding something. Some of my clients like to color code, but with the entire closet as one big category. And every once in a while that works okay because they don't have many clothes and just the way they dress and the clothing that they have, that works. But 99% of the time, that's not gonna work. And let me tell you why. So if you're seeing this as one big category, you got your whites, your reds, your blues, your blacks, maybe that looks prettier to you and that's great but it's gonna end up being less functional and less efficient. Let me give you an example. If I decide, okay, I'm gonna wear a black blazer today. I don't wanna to have to look at all other long sleeve options and I don't wanna to have to look at cardigans and other blazers and hoodies and things like that that I'm not gonna put under a blazer. I just wanna go straight to my tank tops because that's what I like wearing under blazers. I don't put long sleeves under them. I don't usually put short sleeves under them either. It's just tank tops. So it's way more efficient for me just to go to the little tank top section and look through you know, the 10 or 15 options I have and say, okay, what am I gonna put under this blazer? Or what sleeveless dress am I gonna put under this blazer? But if I had to look through everything and it's like, okay, well here are all my, my grays that I might put under here, but there are cardigans, there are hoodies, there are sweaters. I'm not gonna bulk up a sweater under here. you know. So that's just way less efficient. Next, let's talk about shoes. Most of my shoes I have in an over the door thing and that works really great and I can see them all. But then my booties I have here in my closet. In this box in the bottom, I have my black suede booties and these are a little bit more of a pain to clean off if they get dusty. So I like keeping them in the box, but I also have a caution with boxes like that or keeping your shoes in the original box that you bought them in. What I see with that is clients who do that don't often wear those things as much. And you bought them so that you can enjoy them, but if they're buried in you know a stack of boxes, five or six high, and it's a pain in the butt to get them in and out, and they're out of sight, out of mind, then what I see is they don't really get worn. And to me, that's just kind of sad and kind of a waste. Like you have cute things so that you can wear them and enjoy them and show them off. So have them out where you can see them and enjoy them and look at how pretty they are and grab them so much easier so that you don't have to take so much time when you're getting ready to pull out that box. Just a thought. So that's my closet and you can see I'm not a minimalist and I don't force my clients to be minimalist either. But my rule is if you have a lot of something, make sure that it's organized, make sure that it's functional and make sure that it's stuff that you use or need or love. And if it doesn't fall into one of those categories, let it go and have the benefit of more space rather than just feeling like you're maximizing your space but then it's not as functional or as beautiful as it could be, you'll notice that I have space between my hangers. Theoretically, I could fit a lot more in this closet. That's a lot of open space, right? Some people might see that as wasted space and oh, you could really maximize your closet so much more. Well, is it really maximizing your closet to pack things in so tightly that they're getting wrinkled or damaged or that you can't really see them as well or that you really have to take time to fuss with it and get it in and out? To me, that 
doesn't maximize my life, that doesn't improve my life or that's not serving me. So I'm not going to pack things in to have more clothes just because I can. I'm going to have the, the clothes that I really love, that I really use and that I really want and then let go of the things that, that I don't want as much even though in theory I could fit a lot more in this closet. So is it really worth it to have more items but to have more frustration to maintain that? To me, it's not worth it. So that's all I have for you. And I hope that you got some great ideas and some great principles that you can apply in your closet. And you should really subscribe to our newsletter because when I send that out, I include other little tidbits, product recommendations. You can do so at theorganizingco.com slash blog and sign up for our newsletter there to make sure that you get all the information more so than what we can share in these little videos. Thanks again for watching. I'm Christina Morton from The Organizing Company. Life's better when it's put together.